Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 43.7k subscribers. Can we get to 44k by the end of the month? Please like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. But before we get started, I have to tell you guys about my friends over at Noble Gold. Gold just made history. It hit its record high of 1933.30 and Bloomberg says it will zoom past $2,000 sooner than expected. Bank of America said it will get to 3,000 in 18 months. Billionaire Thomas Kaplan predicted a new decade-long bull market that will push us past $5,000 an ounce. If you're sick of low returns, hassle, and volatility, it's time to look at gold and silver. Choose precious metals with noble gold and move to an IRA or 401k this month, and you may even get a free 5-ounce silver America the Beautiful coin. This coin has gone up by 17% since this offer started in July. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. And today we have to talk about a state that very well could flip into Donald Trump's column. Obviously, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, states that are, you know, Trump, what Trump has to keep. But that doesn't mean that Trump can't flip states that he lost in 2016. But first, I would like to say some condolences to Donald Trump's brother who just passed away at age 72. It's very sad. Um, but in terms of the 2020 United States presidential election in the state of Minnesota, we can clearly see that this state probably, you know, could be in play. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we have a lot of polling here that would indicate that it is. If we want to look at the polling data right here, we can. And of the last five polls, Donald Trump is within striking distance. There was one poll that came out of David Binder research that showed Biden up by nearly 20 points. This poll I'm going to disregard completely. It is largely BS, mainly because they only sampled 200 voters. That's not exactly what you need to make a poll. That margin of error could even be wider than the entire margin there. But the bottom line here is that this is very well a state that is in play. People always talk about states Donald Trump needs to win, states he's losing. And Donald Trump is saying, oh, I'm going to go after New York. I'm going to win the state of New York. But in reality, he's not going to win New York. He's just saying that he's bluffing, trying to confuse the Biden campaign. But a state Trump actually can flip, realistically, is the state of Minnesota. Emerson was the most accurate poll back in 2018 has Trump within the margin of error. The Democracy Institute was accurate in the UK elections. Brexit and 2016 nailed it all on the nose, and it shows Donald Trump has a 1% lead in the state of Minnesota, and a lot of these polls have plenty of undecided. So I think that this state is going to go down the wire. And even more so, you look at the Senate election here. If you want to look at this in depth, you can look at this here. You can see Tina Smith in the last Emerson poll leads Jason Lewis by just 3%. That's a lean margin. The Senate seat very may well be in play. Jason Lewis is a very strong candidate, and Minnesota is a very weird state. Yes, it has not voted uh, Republican since 1972, but again, that could change. And we're going to talk about why this is. And it's not just me saying this, it's some of the people that I rail against completely all the time, like Nate Silver. And I'm going to get into that in a second. So right now you can see that uh, even Jason Lewis is in the one poll released by the Democrats that was registered voters had Tina Smith up by just 9%. That's not a very good look, um, especially when states like Pennsylvania and some regular polls, you'll get an outlier of 9%. The Democrats are releasing a poll that has uh, Tina Smith up by just 9%. And that is a lot of undecideds. And when you factor in the undecided, she stays at 48 in the in the more recent poll. But Jason Lewis bumps up to 45. There's plenty of other undecideds in the poll. Jason Lewis, for all we know, might be right on her tail. And where's the evidence that Minnesota's trending red? Let's look at the 2016 election here. Um, this was a map that looked fairly favorable to Trump statewide. There were plenty of counties that Trump could do better in. You want to look at counties in um, the Iron Range, like Lake County. Trump can probably and probably will flip that county. Um, same thing with Carleton County here. There's plenty of other counties um, out state. Uh, you see he's not really maxed out by any means in a lot of these counties that have a lot of legacy Dems, and they don't like to see what's happening to their great city of Minneapolis. I think if Trump handled the riots better, he could very well have been a shoo-in in the state of Minnesota. A lot of people are going to mention Blue Earth County flipping back in 2018. However, one of the factors a lot of people aren't talking about is that a lot of the student registration drive in college towns like Blue Earth County and, you know, the University of Minnesota, even if the colleges do remain open in November, 
it doesn't necessarily mean they're resuming full operation. Again, you look at me, my college is open, but all of my courses are online, and you see this as a recurring theme throughout. So I think Trump, without the students, you know, they don't have their standard get-out-the-vote operation. They're even whining about this in the Madison, Wisconsin uh, newspaper that is extremely far left. They are extremely scared. And you can look at Blue Earth County. This is a county that Trump won by, you know, 1,200 votes. And I think that Bernie Sanders could, you know, flip a college town like that. But you guys do know that Joe Biden probably generates about the same enthusiasm, if not less in terms of these college towns and Hillary Clinton. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't like Donald Trump, but a lot of the students, they don't exactly vote. And if you want to look at the long-term trend, this was the change map between 2012 and 2016 in the state of uh, Minnesota. You saw every single district, except for a few in the Minneapolis area, uh, moved to the right in 2016. Some of the districts moved right by more than 20 points. And honestly, I personally think Colin Peterson may be toast. There was one poll there that had Colin Peterson down by 10 percentage points in his district. So this is more evidence that shows that Minnesota could be a sleeper for Donald Trump in the 2020 election. Also, another thing to note is that there were a lot of third-party voters. Gary Johnson got 3.8% of the vote. Evan McMullen got 1.8. I guarantee you a lot of the McMullen vote, and you look at this and you see the Romney to other or Romney to no vote voters, um, it by all data metrics are showing Trump having a wide favorability advantage over Joe Biden. So that's more good news for Trump. Uh, there were internal polls in the Johnson campaign that showed 70% of his voters would go to Trump in a gun to the head two-way race. So you look at that, you see there was roughly, you know, add Daryl Castle into it, there were 6% of, um, you know, the vote out there that could have gone to Donald Trump that he didn't get. And there's also some legacy Democrats that could have voted for Hillary Clinton that live in some of these, you know, rural northern counties that could eventually flip to Donald Trump. You never know. But the bottom line here is we know the state's moving right. The midterm was an anomaly. But again, Donald Trump brings voters out to vote that usually don't otherwise vote. And even in the midterm electorate, where the Republicans got completely shellacked. Donald Trump still had a 46% job approval in the state of Minnesota. And we do know that it uh, looks like, from the looks of it, that Clinton voters were slightly more likely to turn out than Trump voters in the midterm. We do know how that's how midterms work. So I think if Trump can get full turnout, he may be confident that he has a very good chance in Minnesota. And now it's time to take a look at who else is saying it. You know, the people, I like to say, the election mafia. And there's many, many... Um, you know, factions of the election mafia, but I think that 538 is kind of one of those factions. And if you guys want to look at this election right here, you can see that there's the snake graph. And I actually like what Nate Silver does. He did this back in 2016, and it shows what exactly does Trump need to do to win. Right now, he's, you know, it's a winding snake. So far, he's got all the safe states. Now he's, you know, got Texas, Iowa, Georgia, Ohio, North Carolina, probably Nebraska second. If he can consolidate his support in Arizona, which he's within the margin of error, and Florida, which is known for some wishy-washy polling early on, and we see that now. I think that he's not down by five in Florida. He might be down by two in Florida. That doesn't mean he can't win it by the end of the day. Obviously, they have Pennsylvania as the tipping point state. I like to talk about Pennsylvania and say that it is the state that is going to go down the wire. It could be the closest state. It could be a while before we know who wins it. And if that is the case, then, you know, the election will be determined by it. But the bottom line here is that Minnesota is actually before Wisconsin, which is a state that I probably would have traditionally expected to go red before Pennsylvania would. I would have Wisconsin as the closest state-leaning Republican. Nate Silver seems to think that Minnesota will be closer than Wisconsin and Michigan and New Hampshire and Nevada. Michigan's all the way back here by Maine at large in Colorado. It's not a state that Nate Silver's confident Trump can hold. Personally, I think Trump can, can win the state of Michigan. Yeah, he's down in the polls right now. That doesn't necessarily mean he's completely, you know, blump is finished. But, uh, you know, that's how some of the, the early polling can look in Michigan. It will probably tighten as, you know, there's more likely voter screens. And there's very, you know, inconsistent polling. There's going to be polls that will show Trump's up by one in Michigan or down by one. And then there's going to be polls that are showing Trump down by eight, Trump down by nine in Michigan. So you kind of have a little bit of a mixed bag when it comes to polling. But I think that Nate Silver's seeing 
that a lot of the polls in Minnesota are actually closer than some of the polls we've seen in places like Wisconsin, New Hampshire, Michigan, which are all states Trump can win. I think he'll probably win Wisconsin. I think he has a good shot at Michigan. New Hampshire is possible. I probably would expect New Hampshire and Michigan to go before Nevada, which again is a state that technically could be in play, but Trump probably should focus winning two or three states because he only needs to flip two or three states from what the RCP aggregate is showing right now, and then he will be president. Obviously, we know this when he talks about, you know, winning New York. He's not being serious, but a state that he could flip into his column is Minnesota. And if he loses Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, ironically enough, and he somehow manages to win Minnesota off of a massive fluke, he very well would have won the election that way. And we do know that Minnesota, demographically speaking, is a state that's like 90% white or so. And there's a lot of, you, you see what's happening with the riots, you see the destruction of Minneapolis, and a lot of people, it doesn't really matter what their ethnicity is or whatever, it's not about that necessarily. But a lot of people in the suburbs and the rural areas surrounding Minneapolis don't like what's happening to their city. And even if they think that Trump didn't do his job, you know, precisely, they're still going to vote for him over somebody who indirectly basically said he kind of wants to defund the police in a way. He's kind of, you know, sidestepped the question. He said he wanted to divert funding away from police departments. That's playing right into the hands of the left, as you can see there. But the bottom line here is that Minnesota very well could flip, and I don't think the Trump campaign should necessarily ignore it. And you look at a lot of the polling we're seeing. Democracy Institute was actually on point back in 2016. And you see Donald Trump is leading Biden 46 to 45 with 9% undecided. Obviously, throw out the David Binder research poll that showed Biden up by 18 points. We know that that's not going to happen. Emerson is a reputable polling firm. Obviously, some people are going to say they're using Amazon's data system, so it could be, you know, drastically off this time around. But we don't have enough uh, proof that that's necessarily going to change the outcome of things too much in terms of the polling. So it's very interesting stuff to see, especially that people think Minnesota could go down the wire. Not only that, but people like Nate Silver saying it could be one of the defining, determining states in this election cycle. And you see the polls that have Jason Lewis on the tail of Tina Smith. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see exactly what happens down the stretch because we know that it was you know, a, a state that Donald Trump couldn't even crack 45% in. But at the same time, you know, in the midterms, he still had a higher approval rating than the vote share he got. But if you consolidate the third party support behind Trump, he would have technically won the state if it was a two-way race. I guarantee that that would have happened. And there's a lot of Bernie bros in the Twin Cities area that aren't necessarily too happy about the Biden pick. You know, you saw a lot of the uh, ambivalent vote in 2016. Am I sure that it's going to be, you know, more of a factor this time? No, but there's probably going to be some Democrats, Bernie bros, people that are going to stay home because of it. And the enthusiasm for Biden, especially with the college towns being shut down, is going to be even lower as a result. So it's very interesting stuff, and we'll just have to wait and see when it comes down to Minnesota. Um, if you want to look at the polling from 2016, if you want to look at the polling there, there was very little data out of Minnesota, and every single poll showed Hillary Clinton up by a massive margin over Donald Trump. So the polls are even closer than they were last time. So it's very interesting to look at. You look at the fact that all the polls had Clinton up by 6, 7, 8, 10, and Trump almost won the state. I think if he put more time and energy into it, he would have won it. So it's one of these things that we're just going to have to wait and see. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, become a member, and donate to the Patreon or subscribe star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.